Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and to my latest episode of New Album Spotlight, the show where I put the spotlight on a new album in progressive rock that I've really been loving. It's a great chance to be able to focus on some music that maybe isn't getting the recognition that it deserves, maybe is a bit underground, but I want to bring it to you guys so you guys can discover it and enjoy what's on display here to bring more attention to some great artists that deserve such attention. And this is a new band. This is a band called Oddleaf, and this is their debut record where Ideal and Denial collide. And this is a fantastic French progressive rock band who came together in 2020 when Karina Tarr, who plays keys, and Matthew Rossi, who plays flutes, uh, decided to create a prog rock project and slowly built a band to be able to play this music. And the album features a lot of cool vintage instruments. You know, you get your Mellotron and your Hammond organ, some uh, electric and acoustic flutes, some four-part harmony vocals, uh, just some really cool sounds and vibes. It takes a bit of kind of that classic era of progressive rock, maybe more folk-tinged like Renaissance, Camel, uh, maybe a bit of Jethro Tull and those style influences, but brings in some modern influences as well, such as Big Big Train and Wobbler, a bit of Agusa, a lot of that kind of Norwegian prog feel to me is is coming clear through this record maybe because of that folkier style uh, but it's a fabulous re release that really impressed me especially for a debut uh, the lineup as i mentioned we have a uh, karina tar on keys and backing vocals and i believe uh is the primary writer of all of this music uh, we've got matthew rossi on flutes and backing vocals we've got clement curadao on drums, we've got Oliver Orlando on bass guitar and backing vocals, and then Adeline Gertner on lead vocals. So fantastic vocal performance. I love the female vocals uh, throughout the track list here. Uh, and some really cool luscious background harmonies that really provide a cool feel in the vocal power that's on display here of both male and female vocals all coming together to combine. I love great vocal performances. I love harmony vocals as is well documented. I love Moon Safari. I love these bands. Even Yes with their great style of harmony vocals that are catchy and fun to listen to and just really expressive and, and beautiful. And you get definitely some of that on display here. And what's really great about this band is they're able to kind of lay back in these ethereal sounds and these kind of more atmospheric sections. Uh, but when they get going, they have these furious instrumental moments that remind you of the best of those Norwegian prog groups of Wobbler, of Agusa, and they just go full bore with some really cool organ work, some cool flute soloing, and that folky flavor on full display with that classic symphonic prog feel, which all hooks together in a fantastic fashion and makes for a fun listen all the way throughout. Uh, the first track is The Eternal Tree, which is two minutes long. Mostly just atmosphere and dreamy keys and electronica style beat. Kind of a mood, mood setter. You get a soaring synth lead. And it leads you right into the first bigger track here called Life, which is at 11 and a half minutes long. You get those harmony vocals that I was mentioning right at the start. You get some great drumming and soaring synth leads. Uh, that's, that folky vibe comes through really strong with some subtle flute sounds and that unique female vocal lead. I really like her voice. It's very singular and interesting. Uh, about three minutes in, we get a unique organ line at first subdued, but adding some power as it goes. And as we continue through the song we get these cool synth leads over top with some busy bass work and have that instrumental powerhouse section more off kilter and, and proggier as it continues along and definitely shades of agusa or wobbler uh, throughout so uh, really cool how it morphs and, and weaves throughout these different sections there's more laid back folkier moments but then those high octane instrumental powerhouse sections and i love the folkier feel throughout the lighter dreamier sequences almost a moody blues type vibe and they're more laid back moments but consistent all the way throughout with some great flute work and some great synth textures as well so beautiful uh, track to give you an idea for the band ethereal melodies is well named that comes next some beautiful acoustic guitars and flutes uh, give this a light pastoral feel, some great expressive vocals, a cool keyboard solo and guitar solo towards the end really bring this home and give you that majestic, powerful feel. 
a wonderful track. Then we get a big track called Back in Time, which is 14 and a half minutes long with a big, big cinematic opening with atmosphere and those big vocal harmonies once again with flutes fluttering in the background. We get some cool, slow and subtle textures. Uh, and then you get that kind of quirkier groove with some bass work and haunting vocals with a folky vibe accented by expressive flutes and a cool vocal delivery. And five minutes in, we get this cool, funky organ, some quirky bass grooves, some fun flute soloing. Uh, like I've been mentioning, it reminds me of Agusa at their best. Just really cool, funky vibes that really get my head bopping, and I just have a huge smile on my face. So groovy, so cool. Uh, shifts to some cool organ soloing sounds. And this comes back a couple times throughout this rest of this track. So it's kind of trading off between the more lighter pastoral ethereal moments, focusing on those vocals, which the vocalist, uh, she reminds me a bit of Mariana Simkina, perhaps, uh, with a really ethereal style, angelic, uh, sweet, sweetly sung vocals, but with character. Um, and I like when there's a, one of those quirky instrumental section that adds a bit of a gentle giant -y kind of classical fa flavor for a brief section before we get back to that folky instrumental sound of uh, super fun. The last couple minutes uh, bring back this kind of darker, more uh, interesting instrumental workout uh, full of off kilter organ and flute work uh, that just showcases those two sides so brilliantly expertly well. We get a short track called Prelude, which is exactly that, some synth texture and atmospheres uh, serving as a prelude to the final track, which is Coexistence Part 1. And to me, this is the highlight of the whole record. It's an instrumental track that allows them to fully shine and show off all of their chops and everything that they're known for. A uh, cool, swirling, expressive instrumental with lots of cool vibes. A little bit of a psychedelic, spacey type atmosphere at the beginning, some cool synth work, some added guitar lines. Uh, with some fairly furious drum work under underneath it all. And it just continues to gain steam and momentum as it get, gets into a harder edged bent with a bit of a stop start vocal texture that kind of reminds me of the opening of Close to the Edge. It has an angular, almost King Crimson-esque feel to this section. Uh, so I love this like juxtaposition of this heavier darkness to the more lighty, more spacier Floydian moments. Uh, there's some cool spacey sounds, some beautiful flute work, some folky acoustic guitar, dark and dreamy vibes and it continues to kind of morph between these different sections ramps back up to some crunching uh, hard-hitting king crimson vibes and a super epic majestic closing section with swirling keyboards heavy mellotron and soaring guitars so it's a great band uh, a great debut record and it sounds fantastic for an early record uh, for this band you know it's surprising that they're able to make it sound so good and that they play at such a high level it was really impressing me all the way throughout especially those cool quirky instrumental sections that just uh, always make me light up because those are the fun parts that bring to mind all of this other classic material that I love and just allows me to really get into the groove and, and bop my head along to what they're trying to do. And I like the surprise. I like not knowing what section is around the corner, that it could be these more ethereal, beautiful, dreamy sections, could be this folky, fun, funky moment. Uh, and it's always a surprise or what's around the corner. So uh, I really love this band. I love their blend of like a classic symphonic prog style with more quirky, newer prog sounds. Uh, and bringing in a more folkier feel than just their other contemporaries. I think it's a great combination of things with some great vocals, some great flute work, and it all amasses into a really singular great album. It's a little bit on the shorter side. I mean, it's it's a great length because it leaves you wanting more. Uh, I always get through this album pretty quickly, and then I'm like, oh yeah, it's already over. I've already gotten through it. But uh, always ready for the repeat listen because it's that good to just kind of go back through and be able to uh, take in all of these cool disparate sections and enjoy what they've got on display. So if you love your classic symphonic prog, if you like a bit of a folkier tinge to your music, if you like some modern influences, especially from like Norwegian prog, which is really killing it right now, this is a great recommendation. I really urge you all to go check it out. I believe the best way is going to their band camp and finding it there. I'll put a link to it in the description as well. So hopefully you guys enjoy this recommendation and I hope you guys go out and check it out and support the artist and give them the love they deserve. So uh, wonderful music 
and I'm excited to talk more about albums that are upcoming. A lot of great music out there. Uh, so many albums, so little time, but I'm trying to do my best to pluck out the, the gems uh, that I think you guys will love. So uh, please check it out, and hopefully you'll stick around for more videos in the future. Thank you guys. See you next time.